Washington, D.C. And the schedule for the previous year um, had an error in it. There were some payments that were made for vehicles uh, with federal funds. And because of the way the information was accumulated, put together, the information that those were from federal grant monies didn't make it back to the person who was preparing the schedule, so they were omitted. The reporting was done correctly on the program level. It was just for the financial statements where there was the omission um, in that Unfortunately, at uh, uh, the rule makers for me and my auditing, they say that this is a uh, uh, what we would consider a significant deficiency. Now, there's two levels of the findings. There's the significant deficiencies, which sounds pretty bad, but those are really the lesser of the two. And then there are material weaknesses. So we, we did not note any material weaknesses. We reported this as a deficiency, uh, that uh, the schedule was corrected and, and it was fixed, and I believe that the controls have been updated a little bit so that it would not happen again. So that is the <laughs> nutshell version of what you have in the document that, that we provided uh, and, a, and a brief summary of what those reports say and, and, and hopefully a little more plain English version of what they mean. Um, but I also uh, would always like to entertain if anybody has any questions for me about what we were doing while we were here, what we were finding, what we were working on, how we were <coughs> about it, anything in the report, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Jeff, on that significant deficiency, would there be any kind of penalty or any, any, anything other than the, the fix? Uh, no, I, well, I, I couldn't say there's a hundred percent chance that there's not going to be any negative impact, but I've been doing these types of audits for almost 30 years now. This is something like this. I've never seen any kind of a negative impact on this. Okay. So, uh, and probably more specifically because it's not directly related to the actual administration of any of the grants. It was more of a, just a reporting in, in the audit report for the financial statements. So uh, as long as there are no recommendations or findings related to the specific compliance, uh, I've never seen where there would be anything that would be any negative consequence. But as far as the audit was concerned on the coronavirus dollars, 1.6, you went through that, and then 5 million on the airport, is that right? 2.2. Yes. Or 2.2. 2.2, uh, uh, um, I think. Yeah, 2.2. But as far as you're, you were concerned, the money was spent the way it was supposed to be spent from the federal level. Correct, okay. correct. And there are actually... Um, there are 14 compliance requirements applicable to these grants, so it's more than just where the money's spent. I mean, we're looking at uh, things like, did you check to see if the vendors were suspended or debarred from doing business with the federal government? We're looking at procurement practices, bidding requirements. Uh, we're looking at whether the activities were actually allowable to be charged to this particular grant. We're looking at eligibility determinations, <laughs> matching requirements. I mean, we're, we're going through these grants. Um, and we actually issued an, uh, it's an unmodified opinion on your compliance with those requirements. So that's what I, I should have said that whenever I was talking about the report itself. Um, so it, it was a clean opinion on your compliance. Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. Is it my imagination or was this thing 95 pages last year? <laughs> that's probably about well, right. Is it? Okay. Well, that, I well no, that. I take that back. No, I believe it was a little bit longer. Okay. Um, your your report over time had kind of grown to where it was including a lot more information than was actually required. And, um, and uh, this year, we were asked to assist with the preparation of the financial statements. Uh, so it was kind of a, a good opportunity to go back through that report um, you know, there was nothing wrong with having the extra information. You're, uh, uh, right. that, that was perfectly fine to do, but it was a good opportunity to kind of scale back to more of what's required to be in these financial statements and put it together. Okay. Uh, um, Appreciate it. Anybody have any questions? Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, I, just one last thing I'd like to pass along. I think you've heard me say this before, too. Um, when this is the case, I like to uh, discuss this part of the meeting. 
Uh, sometimes I just say thank you and I turn around and I leave at this point. Um, but when it is the case, I like to pass along to you that we're here um, for several weeks um, and, and working with people and, and we get a chance to maybe see how things are, are conducted when you're not necessarily around. And I just wanted to let you know that your, your accounting department, your finance department, and all of the other departments that we were working with, while, whether it be the grants or the inventory or whatever it was we were working with, every person that we worked with was, treated us very professionally, um, uh, very courteous, very helpful. Um, when we would ask for stuff, people would uh, jump to help us out, and we really appreciate that. So I just wanted to pass along that that's been our experience working with uh, uh, people at all different levels of the city. We appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you. likewise, your firm's very professional to work with, too, having got to work with you guys outside of these, these walls, too. And kudos to staff. Um, <clears throat> over the last six years, we get this audit report, and I and this is a much bigger deal than, than what we make of it. And to be able <clears throat> to get a clean bill of health every year in and year out, I really appreciate staff's work on this and appreciate your work on this, too, Jeff. Totally. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank all you. Right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you all. Appreciate it. <clears throat> we'll move into communication reports, Council. Well, I'm going to start by saying the same thing I've said for a very long time now, is make sure that you and your family take the precautions necessary to keep you and your loved ones healthy, even though the numbers are trending in a very positive direction with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the, U we, the world did pass a milestone today of having over 6 million deaths. And so we still want to make sure that people get vaccinated, boosted, wash their hands, socially distance, wear a mask, whatever you see fit for you and your loved ones. So I just wanted to, to make sure that I put that out there for probably the 185th time or however long it's been. Uh, <laughs> it seems like I've been saying that a lot. Um, yeah. Um, additionally, I was able to go to, uh, to, to the Marina study uh, that happened here in this council chambers uh, a week or so ago. And it was very interesting just to talk to some citizens about their interest in uh, the city of Cape Girardeau and some sort of a transient boat docking facility or marina. So that's always great to hear opinions in that regard and also great to just see comparative opportunities that are out there. You know, they, they had nice big, uh, nice big boards of, of showing pictures of Alton and Memphis and all the other things. And so it's just neat to have community think, have the community think on that and kind of Everybody gets to be a little creative, what they think, where it should go, what's the best option. Uh, living in Red Star and in uh, Ward 1, there's a lot of people that have made their livings on the river. And so I've heard even some opinions just from people that have been previously working in the barge industry, uh, the inland transportation industry. So just kind of interesting stuff. Um, lastly, before I turn it over to other people, Throughout my career and my time here at Southeast Missouri State and in Cape Girardeau, I've had the opportunity to work with many uh, students from the Ukraine. And I, a lot of them called Ward 1 home. And so I just want to tell those students that they are welcomed and they are valued and uh, that we enjoy their presence here in the city of Cape Girardeau and especially in Ward 1. And I just wish them all the best. And I wish for a, a, a swift conclusion. Thank you, Dan. Very well said. Anybody else? Sure, I'll, I'll add to that. Thank you, Dan. Um, it was brought to my attention about a week ago that we we do have citizens from the Ukraine here in our community. Um, and we do have a situation where we're trying to return some family members to the state. So let's just offer our thoughts and prayers for those families and, of course, the entire country. Um, but, And I, I just want to make sure that we're offering each other peace during this time as well. So what happens a mile away or 5,000 miles away does affect us. And we don't always talk about what's happening worldwide. Uh, that's generally been the practice that we don't discuss it. Um, so I think maybe this is the time that we do discuss those matters because they affect us right here at home. Thanks, Shannon. Anybody else? Uh, I'll let you do that. No. no, go ahead. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> steal the mayor's thunder. I, I guess the mayor and myself and a variety of staff attended the uh, Old Town Cape um, annual dinner the other night and awards banquet. And um, it was always a great event, recognizing our downtown merchants and, and members of that community. But uh, also the city, the city of Cape was awarded um, a, a pretty prestigious award in, in their camp um, for this project that you're in right now. 
um, for the revitalization of the Common Police Courthouse and the Carnegie Library and in the, the annex in between. And uh, the mayor accepted that on our behalf and it was a good recognition. So, thanks. It's always nice when somebody else reports. Uh, uh, nobody has anything else. I'll just make a few comments about different things. Uh, uh, since the last, well, I guess this was uh, before the last meeting because I was out of town right after this meeting and missed our last meeting. Uh, Magnet Board Bet, uh, still working on a strategic plan uh, involving ally partners and impl implementation and moving forward with that. Uh, March 2nd, the Transamerica Corridor Board met. Uh, we're coordinating an effort with a group from Springfield and Wichita to meet over in Springfield within the next two or three weeks uh, to uh, try to keep that effort going. Uh, he mentioned the Old Town Cape Awards, and uh, it really was an honor to receive that award. And Pencil Construction and Trainer HL Architects also received an award also. It's the Preservation of Heritage Award. And uh, it was it was really neat to hear uh, Bill Pencil make the comment that, you know, he said before that this was probably the the uh, best project of his career, and he's been there 40 plus years. But he said this is probably the most uh, the biggest project that Pencil Construction has done in the 112 years of their history. So that says a lot. And uh, Trainer HL was also very complimentary of, of the fact that uh, uh, she deals with historical uh, renovations. And uh, the fact that we had two historic buildings and then built a building between the two buildings was something that she had never done before. And it was a really unique project, and it was a big project for them also. So. It uh, means a lot to our city and the downtown area and our citizens to have this beautiful facility. And I hope that, that people will continue to come and look at it and tour it and, and uh, see what their tax dollars got. So thank you to the people for making this possible. Uh, Wednesday is uh, our noon Optimus Chili Day. I get to... Uh, have the honor of cooking the chili again for the 38th year in a row. So if you're out Wednesday for lunch or dinner, come by and have a bowl of chili. And the next Wednesday on the 16th is the uh, Lions, Lions Pancake, Pancake Day. Day at the same place at the arena building. So uh, I've only been doing that for 15 years. So wow. I've got some time. To well, if you had hair, it'd be great. Probably. <laughs> Anyway, just two community activities that uh, we like to see the public come out and support. I don't have anything else. Kenny? Anybody else? Nope. Are there any appearances this evening by any advisory board applicants? Don't see anybody out there. If not, are there any appearances uh, for anybody, for any item that's not on the agenda this evening? Any appearances for any item that's not on the agenda? I guess we'll start with number nine. I guess we'll start with number nine. <laughs> I guess we'll start with number nine. This is better. There you go. Thanks. I guess we'll start with number nine. Department of Conservation matching grant for the... Um, Enhancing access to the pond for fishing and other outdoor activities. Number 10, uh, this is an agreement with Jungle Construction. So, again, the Capitol Hall Park project, uh, the pond at Capitol Hall is in need of long term maintenance and improvements due to sediment buildup over time. Um, number 11, uh, is an agreement with Nick.
Thank you. I don't know why I'm not. Am I getting feedback too? Yes. Yeah. So moved. 